What a great day today, everyone, and here is ASEAN News. Myanmar Human Rights Minister urges Timor-Leste support to the people of Myanmar. Myanmar's Human Rights Minister from the Cabinet of the National Unity Government, Ong Myo, met with the Timorese President of the Republic mid of August 2023 and urged Timorese support for democracy movement in Myanmar in order for Myanmar's people to live in liberty and free from crime and junta's violence. We are talking about how the Timor government can help democracy movement in the countries and also more engagement with the national unity government. The first one is um, recognition, stand for human rights and justice of the people. Timor government always take a leading role of raising human rights situation in the country at the every international and regional forum share the very similar history of operation and want to get more engagement from Timor government to the energy government and the, from the people of Timor Leste to with the people of Myanmar. Timorese President Jose Ramos Ortase here talked with the Timorese Prime Minister concerning Myanmar issues and how to support Myanmar completely. Recently, I have talked with the Prime Minister and sent them an official letter to recommend the government how Timor-Leste can support the democracy movement in Myanmar totally. The government of Myanmar urges Timorese to continue raise Myanmar issues in ASEAN. Thailand Prime Minister promises new era of change to promote unity. Thailand's new Prime Minister, Shreta Tavisin, pledged to bring unity to his country and promote policies that will solve crises and move the country forward. I am confident the next four years will be four years of change. Thailand is at an important juncture. We have crises and problems that need quick solutions. I want to promise that the government under the leadership of Piu Thai will work hard to alleviate suffering, create happiness and bring about prosperity for Thai people and all groups expansively and equally. So Thailand will become a land of hope for the new generation, a land of happiness for all ages, a country with honor and integrity on the international stage once again. In a national televised address, after his endorsement by Thailand's King Sreta, a real estate tycoon pledged to promote inclusiveness and govern for the benefit of all Thais, promising a new era of change. China continues to cooperate with ASEAN country. The experts made their remarks while commenting on the visit paid by Chinese Foreign Minister Wong Yi to Singapore, Malaysia and Cambodia during a panel discussion with China Global Television Network, CGTN. China is already an uh, economic superpower, and uh, in many ways, uh, it has uh, some of the world's most advanced technologies. So certainly, um, Singapore has become sort of an uh, operational headquarters uh, in the region uh, for many of uh, China's tech companies. And so that is probably uh, going to be uh, the way forward, given uh, ASEAN's uh, ambitions in uh, smart city uh, project, China's technologies as well are indispensable uh, to uh, contribute uh, to this uh, ambition. Uh, so I think uh, the, uh, the sort of uh, China's uh, role has changed uh, uh, away from uh, just uh, you know, being a destination for foreign direct investments to uh, being a net investor uh, in uh, uh, Southeast Asia itself. But uh, currently, uh, China has already invested uh, in, for example, uh, transportation technology, smart uh, Malaysia, for example, uh, the uh, social media platforms are certainly, uh, they have their offices uh, in Singapore as well. Rong Yin, Vice President of China Institute of International Studies in Beijing, said China would also like to deepen exchanges and mutual learning and make even greater contribution to peace, stability and development of the region and beyond. I would say China will continue to provide opportunities, will continue to serve as a kind of platform where ASEAN in general and the three countries in particular will continue to work together. And the most important thing is that I think in terms of the three con I mean, Chinese and would like to work together to share the experiences, to learn from each other how to manage the transition like that, in particularly in terms of uh, 
the uh, digital uh, uh, transformation, uh, green transformation, energy security, food security. There are a lot of uh, sort of experience sharing governance issues that can be learned. I think this is equally important than practical cooperation. Wang also a member of the Political Bureau of Communist Party of China, Central Committee, paid the visit at the invitation of Singaporean Minister for Foreign Affairs Vivian Balakrishnan, Malaysian Minister of Foreign Affairs Zamri Abdul Qadir, and Cambodian Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Prak Sokong. China's relations with Singapore, Malaysia and Cambodia have maintained a sound momentum of growth. China and Singapore have established an all-around high-quality future-oriented partnership. China and Malaysia have reached common understanding on jointly building a community with a shared future. China and Cambodia are working to usher a new era of building a high-quality, high-level and high-standard China-Cambodia community with a shared future. Singapore's Prime Minister hopes to see country's economic growth this year. Prime Minister Li Xian Lun said Singapore is keeping up economically and the city state expects to see new economic growth this year. Speaking during his annual policy address called the National Day Rally, Li warned Singaporeans however the global warming will affect food production and global prices. With global warming, the world is also experiencing more extreme weather. From China to Japan to Europe and the US, no region is spared from floods and droughts heat waves and wildfires. This will affect food production and prices worldwide. We have not fully felt it in Singapore yet, but it is coming. Economically, Singapore is keeping up. We expect positive economic growth this year. Hopefully, we will avoid a recession. Inflation is at last coming down, but it will probably stay higher than what we were used to. And the cost of living is still on everyone's minds. So in my, uh, in my Chinese speech earlier, I explained how the government will continue to support you. We will weather this storm together. Li hopes the country will avoid the recession but said inflation, although it has tapered, will remain higher than what we are used to. Singapore's yearly core inflation rate, which excludes private road transport and accommodation, caused its to 4.2% in June from 4.7% in May. Thailand and China enhanced cooperation in various fields. Yep. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi met with Thai Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Don Pramut Winai in Beijing. The development of bilateral relations will not be affected by changes in the international situation or the domestic situation in Thailand. Wong said China is ready to deepen cooperation in various fields with Thailand and urge to accelerate the construction of China Thailand Railway and the China Laos Thailand Railway Connection Lines and joint efforts to crack down on transnational criminal activities, including telecom fraud. He also expressed to continue supporting the building of the ASEAN community, supporting ASEAN centrality, joint efforts to building an economic growth center. China is ready to work with ASEAN countries to speed up consultations of the Code of Conduct in the South China Sea, strive for the early formation of effective and substantive regional rules, and build the South China Sea into a sea of peace, friendship, and cooperation. Australia expected to further cooperation with Vietnam. <laughs> Australia's Foreign Minister Penny Wong was welcomed to Hanoi by her Vietnamese counterpart Bui Thanh Son to chair the 5th Vietnam-Australia Foreign Minister's meeting. The visit comes hot on the heels of recent visit by Australian Governor General David Hurley and Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese as the two countries celebrate the 50th anniversary of the bilateral diplomatic relations and five years of strategic partnership. According to the media release, in her second visit to Vietnam as a foreign minister, Wong is expected to further deepen Australia's cooperation with a key ASEAN partner. Official data showed in 2021, trade turnover between the two countries was valued at 17.9 billion Australian dollar. Australia is currently Vietnam's seventh largest trading partner. Vietnam and Kazakhstan is strengthening economic ties. Kazakhstan President Kasim Jomar Tokayev was officially welcomed to Vietnam by his counterpart Vietnamese President Vovan Tuong with the countries hoping to boost bilateral ties, particularly trade and economic relations. 
Tokayev three-day visit is the first visit to Vietnam by a president of Kazakhstan in 12 years. In 2015, Vietnam signed a free trade agreement with the Eurasian Economic Union that includes Kazakhstan, Russia, Armenia, Belarus and Kyrgyzstan. The deal took effect in 2016, but bilateral trade remains modest, with the two countries hoping to boost to $1.5 billion by 2030. Tong and Tokayev witnessed the sign of several cooperation agreements in areas of trade, tourism and culture. Indonesia promote new electric vehicle by exhibition. At a recent iteration of Indonesia's largest scale auto show, customers peered curiously around various models of electric vehicles EV on display as the government seeks to increase adoption of the cars in Southeast Asia's largest economy. According to the auto executives and the nation's chief economics minister, said sales of electric cars in Indonesia jumped in April after the government launched tax incentives and he also hoped the auto show would drive sales of more than 26,000 EVs the number sold last year. Arif Sherifuddin, a market and PR director at AMG Motor Indonesia, said they had already sold over 10,000 EVs at the show, highlighting fast and dynamic changing consumer attitudes. However, a customer shopping for an EV at the show said the price premium on such vehicles needed to be reduced for adoption to gain traction among lower middle income consumers. Indonesia set a target of producing some 1,600,000 EVs by 2030, that would be more than 100 times in the number sold in Indonesia in the first half of 2023. Fire burns 15 hectares of landfill in Indonesia. A fire local media reported 15 hectares of one of Indonesia's largest landfills has been caught in fires and has continued to spread for days. The fire, which was allegedly started by stray cigarette pot, was kept ablaze by the prolonged dry season's arid winds carrying the flames across its 25 hectare zones and spreading smoke to adjacent residential areas. Zones 4, 3 and 2 are all burned down, more or less around 15 hectares are in flames. These hills reach up to 50 meters high, and just because the top is visibly burning doesn't mean the inside of that hill isn't. After all of that is charred, there's still fire inside the hills, so that's what's still burning since Sunday. So Saturday we put it off and it came back on Monday until today and has spread to zone to here. So our aerial maneuver is hindered. I saw garbage trucks queuing for kilometers outside. West Panung local government declared residents reported breathing difficulties and eye pain and nearby schools are forced to conduct class online to safeguard students from the ongoing smoke. The Sarimukti Waste Collection Area, located in the West Java West Bandung Regency, is the trash hub of its surrounding areas and cities, including the city of Bandung, that produces 1,500 tons of waste each day. Indonesia Finance Minister says United States and China tension potential for investment opportunity. Indonesia's Finance Minister Sri Mulyani Indrawati said the geopolitical tension between China and U.S. can potentially be beneficial for the Southeast Asian nation's bulk as it provides opportunity for investment during this conference, including the ASEAN Finance Minister and Central Bank Governors Meeting in Jakarta last Friday. She also remarked that the economic growth in ASEAN region is estimated at 4.5% this year, but the inflation rates of some member countries remain high. Uh, we see that the geopolitical situation and the competition between the United States and China can provide also an opportunity on the investment because there is a, a capital outflow, but also capital inflow in terms of the FDI in which both the United States uh, bloc or the European bloc and the China in this case, seeing ASEAN as uh, one of the region that can potentially become the relocation of their investment. This is ASEAN and India is two single, uh, uh, two region that is being seen as potential benefiting from this kind of situation. As presented by the international financial institution, including ADB, IMF World Bank as well as the AMRO, ASEAN economic growth continue to be a bright spot in the global economy. ASEAN was projected to grow at 4.5% this year, higher than the global growth. 
Of course, composition for each country will be different. Financial Sector Minister of the 10 member of ASEAN met in Jakarta last week. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. We'll be back with the latest updated sooner. Have a nice weekdays ahead.